It's a Lama for day, and let's hear from the man himself. Hey everyone, it is Llama 4 Day. Our goal is to build the world's leading AI, open source it, and make it universally accessible so that everyone in the world benefits. And I've said for a while that I think that open source AI is going to become the leading models. And with Llama 4, this is starting to happen. Uh, Meta AI is getting a big upgrade today. So if you want to try Llama 4, you can use Meta AI in WhatsApp, Messenger, or Instagram Direct, or you can go to our website at meta.ai. Uh, today, we are dropping the first two open source Llama 4 models, but we've got two more on the way. The first model is Llama 4 Scout. It is extremely fast, natively multimodal. It has an industry leading nearly infinite 10 million token context length, and it is designed to run on a single GPU. It is 17 billion parameters by 16 experts, and it is by far the highest performing small model in its class. The second model is Llama 4 Maverick, the workhorse. It beats GPT-40 and Gemini Flash 2 on all benchmarks. It is smaller and more efficient than DeepSeq V3, but it is still comparable on text. Plus, it is natively multimodal. This one is 17 billion parameters by 128 experts, and it is designed to run on a single host for easy inference. This thing is a beast. Then we've got two more models on the way. One is Llama 4 Reasoning, and we're going to have more news to share on that in the next month. And the last one uh, we are calling Llama 4 Behemoth. Uh, this thing is massive, uh, more than 2 trillion parameters. I'm not aware of anyone training a larger model out there. It is already the highest performing base model in the world, and it is not even done training yet. We're going to share more about Llama 4 Behemoth soon. Overall, Llama 4 is a milestone for Meta AI and for open source. For the first time, the best small, mid-size, and potentially soon frontier models will be open source. Uh, there's a lot more to do, but the trajectory here is clear. We've got more model drops coming soon, so stay good out there. Okay, so not sure if you caught that, Mark was calling Llama 4 Scout a small model. But in reality, it's almost 110 billion total parameters with 17 billion active parameters, which has 16 experts with a huge context window of 100 million tokens. The other one that he mentioned was Maverick. That again is a huge ginormous model with 400 billion total parameters, 17 billion active parameters with 128 experts. This one has a relatively smaller context window of 1 million tokens, which is still probably the longest context window in Western open weight models. And the last one, which is supposed to be bigger than 2 trillion tokens, this is Lama for Behemoth, almost 300 billion active parameters. So if you look at this, it's actually going to be much larger in terms of active parameters with 16 experts. Now, GPT-4.0 was rumored to be a 1 trillion token or 1 trillion parameters model. But one thing is pretty clear. I think everybody is moving towards these huge models. So if you consider the size of these models, the performance improvement that we are seeing makes absolute sense. However, one of the surprising thing is that Llama 4 Maverick is right now sitting on the second spot in the chatbot arena leaderboard, which is kind of crazy because it's well ahead of GPT-4.0, Croc 3, GPT-4.5 when it comes to user preferences. And it's a huge win for the Llama and Meta team. With Llama 4, they also moved away from dense models. So this is the first time Meta has released an MOE or mixture of expert. It seems like the whole industry is moving towards that. The Gemini models are supposed to be MOEs. Even the DeepSeq models are MOEs. Quinn is also releasing MOEs, right? And most of the bigger and performant models seems to be MOEs. So we, we might be seeing an end to the dense models era. Now, the good thing about MOEs or mixture of experts is that they are also compute efficient. It kind of shows up in this plot. This is the LM Arena ELO score versus cost. So Llama 4 Mavic is the most performant model, probably with the least cost compared to the other Frontier models, but has the highest ELO score. 
which basically measures the user preferences. However, you can't run this on your local machine. You still need an H100 GPU, which has about 80 gigabytes of VRAM. So even if you want to run this in a lower quantization, you will still need at least an H100. Now let's look at the benchmarks. Keep in mind, I'll highly recommend to test this on your own internal benchmarks but these standard benchmarks do give you an idea of how this compares to other models. So for image reasoning, since it's multimodal, the Lama 4 Maverick is state of the art in its class. They are comparing this to Gemini 2.0 Flash and GPT-40. So I would assume that they have very similar sizes. Also, they're comparing it with DeepSeq V3. But overall, on most of these benchmarks, it is state of the art. However, apart from the multimodal benchmarks, it's very close or even lagging behind DeepSeq V3, which is another MOE with almost 600 billion parameters. So for example, if you look at Live Code Bench, DeepSeq V3 is actually better than Llama 4 Maverick. Similarly, on the MMLU Pro, DeepSeq V3 is still better than Llama 4 Maverick. On GPQA, Llama 4 Maverick is better than DeepSeq V3. But the score differences on these benchmarks are not that significant. Interestingly enough, for coding, they are only reporting results on live code bench. I would assume they would also add something like Sui Bench, but in this case, they decided not to. For the Llama 4 Scout, they are comparing it with the previous Llama versions and then Gemma 3, 27 billion. Mistral 3.1, which is a 24 billion model, and Gemini 2.0 Flash Lite. And again, compared to those smaller models, Llama 4 Scout is state of the art on all the tested benchmarks. Now, however, it doesn't seem to be a great coding model based on the benchmarks that they have reported. For me personally, coding is one of my main use cases. So whenever I'm looking at a model, I want to look at its coding capabilities. We will probably have the ADR benchmark and some of the independent benchmarks available pretty soon. So it's going to be interesting to see how this Llama 4 Scout and also Llama 4 Maverick performs on independent benchmarks. We're going to be doing more thorough testing in another video, but let's look at some of the capabilities. This is multimodal in nature, so it has image understanding capabilities. You will be able to provide an input image and ask questions around that image. And based on the benchmarks that we have seen so far, this seems to be pretty good. One more thing is image grounding. So it can actually reason as well based on the input images. So for example, here's the prompt, which tool in the image can be used for measuring length. And now based on all these tools available, it can ground its answer in these images, right? So this is really good to have image understanding capability plus image reasoning capabilities. I am personally interested in its long context capabilities. I do a lot of work with retriever systems and help companies with that. So having a 10 million context window makes it extremely useful. And in certain cases, it could potentially replace existing retrieval systems, although we will need to consider the cost plus the compute but they provided this needle in the haystack test for Llama 4 Maverick when it's only processing text, Llama 4 Scout when it's processing text, and Llama 4 Scouts, which is processing a video up to 20 hours because of its huge 10 million context window. Now, the way needle in the haystack test works is that you take a fact, you embed it, in the text at different positions. If you look here, for example, starting at the top seven quartile or like the top 35 all the way up to 100. So you place that fact at different depth and then you ask the LLM to retrieve that. When it comes to long context retrieval, Llama 4 Scout with 10 million tokens seems to be doing really good at different depth of retrieval. It seems like the whole 10 million context window is usable, especially for retrieval, a single fact. However, normally people look at multiple different facts or multiple different pieces of information when they are doing retrieval tasks. So it's going to be interesting to see how it holds up if you're looking at 
multiple different retrieval steps in a single prompt. Now, when it comes to it comes to Maverick, I think it also holds up pretty nicely. For example, if you put a fact up to the 70th, 70th quantile, it seems like even that one million contacts window is usable. But if you go beyond that, it does seem to have some trouble when it comes to retrieval. And Lava Force Scout also seems to have pretty good uh, retrieval accuracy for videos as well. Now, the interesting thing would be, is it processing the videos frame by frame or it's only processing the text? I think we will need to see. I need to read more on that, how exactly it's processing multimodal information when it comes to video. Uh, there is also this very interesting chart from the Chatbot Arena Leaderboard Benchmark Score. It kind of shows the changes in ELO score for different model providers over the years. And the biggest jump that we have seen from one generation to the other generation is Llama. So this was around 1250 or 1270, I would say. The previous generation, that's the ELO score. And right now, we have 14, 1417, which is just behind the Gemini 2.5 Pro. This is an insane jump when it comes to user preferences for any given model family. So this is really awesome uh, work from the Llama team. It's a huge performance boost in a single generation. Now, I do want to highlight a few other things, especially when it comes to 10 million context window or 1 million context window for Llama 4 Maverick. You already need an H100 GPU in order to run Llama 4 Scout if you're looking at 4-bit quantization. But if you want to use the 10 million tokens, you will need substantially more GPU VRAM compared to just loading the model in VRAM. So in all practice, I think nobody will be able to provide you 10 million context window. I'm out, and I'm talking about these different service providers. Forget about hosting this on your own infrastructure. Unless you're something like Google who are hosting the 1 million context window on their TPUs or Meta somehow decides to host this model themselves. Second, there is some discussion around the license itself. So here's Maxim. He highlighted that Llama 4's license comes with several limitations. Companies with more than 700 million active users must request a special license from Meta, which Meta can grant or deny as its sole discretion. And you must prominently display built with Meta on websites, influencer interfaces and documentation, etc. Now, personally, I don't care if they are asking for a company that has 700 million active users. We are looking at a handful of companies, Meta being one of them, Google, Apple is probably a couple of others that they can actually, they actually have 700 million active monthly users. For companies like that, I think it will be better for them to have either their own large language models, such as what Google is doing. Apple might actually need help from Meta or Google or OpenAI. But for anybody who has less than 700 million active users, I think you are absolutely fine if you can run this model. And I know it's not fully open source based on the definition of what open source is supposed to be. But even if they didn't have this, it's still not an open source model. It's only an open weight model. We don't have access to the training code, training data, etc. So we are absolutely, I think, fine as long as you have less than 700 million active users. Second, this is exactly the same license we had with Llama 3 and Llama 2. So it's nothing new. Now, what if you want to test the model out? So there are a number of different options. For example, together, AI is hosting it. Grok also has the Llama 4 Scouts available on their playground. And I believe through their API as well. Or if you want to run this model yourself, the model weights are available on Hugging Face, both for the Llama 4 Scout and for the Llama 4 Maverick. Or if you can get access to an H200 or B200, you can also run this. Although the performance on the B200 is 3.4 times faster than the H200, which is kind of crazy. You are going to get almost close to 40,000 tokens per second on the Llama 4 Scout. Now, if you just want to try the model out, you can also sign up on the meta.ai. 
you can use your Facebook account and you can start interacting with the model. So for example, we can say, hey, what model are you? I'm going to be creating a more detailed video on the testing. But if you ask it, it says I'm built on Llama 4. So it seems like Llama 4 Scout at least is already active. To close it off, this is significant advancements in open weight models. And to be honest, it seems like nobody really has any modes out there. Both in terms of scaling laws, we are able to scale these models to bigger and bigger sizes. So for example, a 2 trillion behemoth, which is an appropriate name for a true trillion model. And again, this is not the reasoning model. So there is an opportunity, Meta, to create a really great reasoning models on, a, on top of these base models. Second, this release, I think, consolidate the idea that MOEs or a mixture of experts are the way to go. Most of the bigger and performing models today are MOEs. Uh, smaller models like Gemma 3 are still dense models. But for the bigger models, it seems like every Frontier Lab is thinking about building MOEs or mixture of experts. Long context is yet another trend that we're going to start seeing more and more. With 10 million tokens, context window, Llama 4 Scout is probably the, the leading model just behind Gemini because Google did show Gemini 1.5 Pro with 10 million context window. Although I think they never released the actual model. Now, as I pointed out in the video, the only thing I am not really sure about uh, in terms of the capabilities is the coding ability based on the benchmarks that the Meta team has shown here. I would love to see more benchmarks, especially on something like Sweebench, which is I think essentially merging the coding capabilities of a model based on Python programming language, because that's mostly what it is, but still it's a really good indicator of what the coding capabilities of an LLM or an agentic system is. That also brings uh, me to question like how good this is going to be as a coding model or for agentic use. I think we're going to be seeing those capabilities and benchmark scores coming out pretty soon, but it, it's great to see state of the art Frontier model being released on a weekend. That was actually the first. Anyways, let me know if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.